we can put our boat in. Well, well, it's time to go to Kingfisher and do a little bass fishing with our special ops guys, special ops survivors. Man, how awesome is this to be a part of this organization? And I can't express how awesome it is to be in the boat with your heroes. These guys are truly, absolutely my heroes. They're dedicated to our armed forces and working to keep us free, and it is so cool to hang out with them. So Special Ops Survivors, Kingfisher Society, fishing and fellowship for freedom. You stay with me, I'm Hank Parker. I told a guy I got a one 15 four-stroke Mercury. He said, how fast you have that boat up to? I had it in the 80s. 80 mile an hour. I said, yeah. Matter of fact, I got a ticket for 83 and a 55. Oh, behind <laughs> your truck. <laughs> Well, while we're here, I want to present everybody with a pair of sunglasses from Solar Bat. Solar Bat, awesome sunglasses, a Hank Parker hat, and a Lose American Hero Rod and Reel. And these are great rod and reel combos. These are high dollar combos. They'll give away probably 400 rods and reels at that Warriors on the Water. Kingfisher Society. <laughs> Let me tell you the name of that lake. Ray Scott came up, of course, Bass Angler Sportsman Society, so Ray talked him into making it Kingfisher Society. But the deal with Kingfisher, and this is so important when you build a, a lake or you dam up a lake or a river, Kingfisher, the dam there, was designed for a grits mill. That's what that dam was built for. And that current was all good. But for growing bass, that current's not good. As big as that lake is, the water that's in that lake today will not be in that lake next week. It's a complete flush out. It probably won't be, if it's in spring of the year, it probably won't be in there the next day. The turnover is tremendous. So the problem with Kingfisher, they could not grow big fish. Absolutely tried everything. You could not fertilize the water. As soon as you would get the nutrients and the pH and everything balanced to grow the fish, the water was gone. Too much flow. You caught one yet? So they raised these fish in hatcheries that get acclimated to eating pellets. And that's what you have at Kingfisher. That's the way you can grow these big giant fish is to be able to have fish that are acclimated to eating pellets. So it's different, but it's all about fishing fellowship for freedom. It's about taking our special ops soldiers and what a unique environment to be able to get to Kingfisher. We got great food, we got great accommodations, we got a beautiful lake, we're protected, we don't have a lot of spectators. Right off the bat. So we're able to get out there and just really enjoy ourselves. So I'm really grateful for a lake like Kingfisher. How about that, Jeffrey? There you go. It's all mine. My hands are all torn all to pieces because I fished on Monday and we caught so many fish. So I'm trying to fish with a golf glove on where I can handle the fish. My thumbs are a mess. We caught so many fish, that's the way I brag, I guess. I was gonna say, there's a, is there anything worse than having tore up hands? Oh, Cause you've been fishing all day? Terrible, it's a dirty job. <laughs> People don't know all the hazards. <laughs> that's a pretty good log there. So I sacrificed myself to make it happen. But I got something my little golf glove. My thumbs are so sore, I can't do anything. You get hazard pay for having your hands tore up like that? Uh, I make a dollar an hour whether my hands are tore up or not. <laughs> How many times have you been deployed? Seven. Seven times. Oh. Made it back and getting ready to retire. That's right. That is awesome. That's right. You know, I told my wife that they, they called me and said I gotta come out here and teach some old man how to how to fish. Man, that was so nice of you. And she said, who are you going to teach? I said, it's Hank Parker. 
Hey, I can almost get my arm out that far. And she said, there you go, big guy. to be the man, you got to beat the man, and he's the man. <laughs> oh, I like her already. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> so, she, uh, she's a big fan. So. That is awesome. I figured she'd say, Hank, who? Oh, no. She knew. Oh, that's a good one there. You look at these fish, they're different. They've got these little bitty mouths and great big bodies. That is a thick, heavy, heavy fish. That is a really good fish. Now we're catching these fish not around the feeders, but uh, in the trees. Going down the bank. Boy, solid fish, man. I mean, solid fish. All these fish are so fat and thick. They're a lot like me. Oh, fat boy. It's like me and going for that retirement belly now that I'm retiring. <laughs> People ask me all the time how to be a better fisherman. If I had one tip to give them, and it's without a doubt get rid of that job. A job <laughs> will mess you up. You heard that right, Deanna? I can get rid of the job and go fishing, baby. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's retiring, Deanna, so he ought to be able to go fishing. <laughs> Get that man a boat. Yes, sir. You gonna wake up every morning and run about five or six miles? No, sir, I've already quit <laughs> that. No, thank you. The only reason I'm running is if the house is on fire. <laughs> well, you better look out. If you ever see me jogging down the road, look who's behind me, because this is gonna be a bad day, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> right. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Now it's time for Hank's tip of the day. Uh, this is one of those things where it kind of fell in our laps and we're like, what exactly is this stuff? You know, we, we figured out this, this material and it's a material that's never been seen in fishing. Uh, say that again, it's never ever been seen in fishing. It's revolutionary. And we're like, okay, now what do we do? We've already got gulp which is an unbelievable bait that puts scent in the water 400 times faster, and power bait, which is provenly effective over the last three decades. Where are we gonna stick this stuff? Because it's different. We were, you know, we were working on shapes and colors and all, and, and all that kind of stuff, and then trying to figure out how effective it was compared to other things. So when we were doing our field testing, which is by far the best part of this job on Earth, you actually got to go out and <laughs> see how good you are, right? But it, it requires several days on the water. When we we test against power bait, and we know power bait is the industry standard. All of a sudden, this stuff is just beating power bait's pants off. And it's not because power bait doesn't work, it's because this puts so much smell out in the water faster, the fish are drawn to it, and then they eat it like they do power bait. So it's just got a leg up on it. At the end of a, a couple weeks of testing, it beat power bait by 45%. And power bait beats the pants off everything else. So we're like, okay, I guess we can put it somewhere. But again, it's a space age material. And the beauty about this compared to like a gulp, gulp dries out on the hook. You know, great in salt water when you're gonna throw it out there oh, and you yeah. know you're one and done oh, or two yeah. and done. Yep. But if you're gonna, if we're gonna take this boat out, we're gonna, we're gonna lay the rods up, we're gonna run 16, 16 miles rod. down. Yep, we're gonna make a long run. That gulp's gonna be a hard stick by the time we get down there. This stuff, you can leave it out for months. It ain't gonna dry up. But the second you put it back in the water, it's blowing that stuff back out. It's a space age material, never been seen. All right, here's what I want to I want to reiterate, and don't let me put words in your mouth, and if I, I read this wrong, correct me. This is a material you were not familiar with. Not at all. You started building baits out of it. You went out and tested it. You really didn't want to build baits out of it. You didn't want, you got enough stuff going that you did not really want to be forced to yep. make it bait. But because the results were 45% better than the best out there in power bait, you could not do it. That's it. You can't throw that sail away. So from a scientific perspective and from a fisherman's perspective, Max Scent was born and developed uh, because it is such an incredible product, not because Berkeley was looking for another material to bring a bait out with. That's exactly right. It's like an oops, oops bait, right? But this thing fits so good into our brand and it allows us, and we got, we got buckets of ideas in terms of chemicals and what we can put into the water. This is another vehicle to get that done. How about that? Yep. 
Well, this was kind of like the commercial a long time ago when Mr. Reese was running with his chocolate and fell in the peanut butter and came out with a Reese's cup. <laughs> yep. How could you not do that? That's awesome. <laughs> exactly right. Boy, it don't smell like a Reese's cup to me. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, my wife says hi. <laughs> that is great. Tell her I said hello and thanks for letting you come out and play with us today. <laughs> Where are you from, Chris? I'm from Northern California. Where? Are you That's going? home. Little town called Santa Rosa, just yeah, north of. Yeah, uh, I've been to Santa Rosa. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Fish it as slow as you can fish it, and then slow down. Get <laughs> <laughs> one of these lethargic bass to bite. Up until today, I haven't caught a fish in a couple of years. You catch one this morning? I did. All right. About four and a quarter. Oh man, that's awesome. We usually catch fish around these cypress trees. I ain't had a bite around the cypress tree. Tell you, old Chris and I had at it this afternoon. <laughs> we caught eight fish this morning. Then I hooked up with Chris at lunchtime and we went right after lunch. And I don't think we've had but two bites. And I mean, we really downscaled and fished hard. It's about time we got one. This is what they call a native fish. I know we're fishing around fish. We just can't get a bite. It's high pressure rolled in here. And the water temperature has actually warmed up from what it was at 52 this morning. And I thought this afternoon when it warmed up it might be better, but was I wrong? That high pressure offset that warmer water to the point they are not doing anything. We can't get a bite. I missed one bite and caught one bite, and that has been it for me. Chris is holding out of where he gets a bite and don't tell me about it. How many bites you have? Probably five or six. Uh, <laughs> man, we're getting the scoop on this thing. <laughs> Hank's show is made possible in part by Luz. Feel the difference. And by Minn Kota. Soft science. Solar Bat and Talon. Sometimes it's hard to do something short and simple, but to make it short, I'm going down to Lake Murray today. I'm gonna to hook up with Jeff Colo, and we're gonna talk in detail on how to get the most out of your hummingbird units. All right, Jeff, I want to show what I was in complete misunderstanding on this north up button, it's not north up at all. It, it is, is in fact autopilot. So I want to show how this autopilot works and it is slicker than sliced bread. I'm traveling along and I'm fishing this bank and I want to continue on this course. So I've got my eye pilot pointed in the direction I want it to go. All I have to do is hit my little button, which will indicate in red, and then my continuous. This is what the autopilot will do. It will follow the direction that I have it steered. And if I want to alter that direction in any way, I can just simply readjust the direction with the foot pedal and it'll continue to follow. But Jeff, what if I wanted to follow a depth contour of say, 10 feet. How could I do that? Well, I'm looking at a beautiful Lake Master map that you have on your Solix, and because you're running a hummingbird and a Minn Kota, and they're tied by the Lake Master map and all of the data in there, we know that we have the depth highlight to right at 10 feet. So if we follow the edge of that depth highlight, I place the cursor right over the edge of depth highlight yep. at 10 feet, and I hit the go to button. It's a one button press. And now I have an option. I can go to that cursor as if we want to go to that waypoint or follow the contour. We want to follow the contour just as if we were fishing the bank in springtime. So I hit the button to follow the contour and now it gives me a choice. This time it says follow the orange direction to go left or the blue to go right. What's your choice, Hank? Let's follow the orange. All right, orange it is. So I can come over here and touch that orange. And now all I do is hit the constant on button for the motor. Your motor is gonna find the place to intersect that contour. And when it gets there, 
it's gonna go into that direction. We are just a little bit shallower, so you can see the motor take us out a little bit deeper. Yeah, and pretty soon it should take now. a left and then follow that contour. All right, now I wanna go into 17 foot of water and follow the contour. Walk me through it one more time. Fair enough. I'm gonna take the joystick and just come over here and put that right on the 17 foot contour and I'm just gonna to touch that right there. You have permission. Oh, whew, thank you. And then all I do is hit the go to button. We can go to the cursor or follow the contour and follow the contour is what we want all to All right, do. now show, go back to that. Go back up to go to go cursor. To all right, now just take your finger and show us how easy it is to hit follow the contour with your finger. All right. And now we can go left orange or blue to the right. What's your choice? Let's go blue to the right. Let's go blue time. to the right. And there it is. So the motor takes over. All we did is I pressed the, the constant coming. on. We turned the motor on basically. And so the motor is going to figure out how to get to that 17 foot contour and it's just drawn a straight line. It'll take us right there. If we're maybe a little impatient, we can turn up the speed and that's the speed that it'll go. But here's a nice part, Hank. Right now, as an angler, you can either retie a, a jig, a spinner bait, or whatever else. You can eat a ham sandwich. You can do whatever you want to do because the boat is literally hey, driving hey, itself. I won't eat the ham sandwich. You, you got one? <laughs> I think so. Huh? It's back in the cooler there. <laughs> well, let's have a ham sandwich. That was a great idea. There we go. All right, I got him. Oh, got him. Good one. Hang with him, Dan. There you go. Hey, don't go away. We just now got it figured out. We'll be right back. That's good. Hold it right there. My hands are so sore, I can't reach down and lift them. <laughs> I have to grab the line. Uh, oh, you were brother. Good job. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Where are you from, Dan? Originally from Arizona. One of the baits that people like to fish there at Kingfisher is this particular bait's called a General, Max Scent Power Bait, this little General. That is a great bait. But I like to duplicate those pellets. So I started fishing the pit boss. Oh man, that's the biggest fish. So now I, I got it here where you can see it real good in this neon blue. But I used the bait in the green pumpkin color. And we may have thrown a chigger crawl once or twice, but pit boss was the bait of choice, no doubt, hands down, 100%. Sweet. <laughs> that's the biggest fish yet. Look at that dude. Man. That's by far the biggest thing. Yeah. You, hold it. you know, every time you go in and do a fishing seminar, everybody that's in that seminar really wants you to pull a bait out of your pocket and say, if you, you'll use this bait, they'll all come out with their fins up. But it really doesn't work that way. It's little simple things put together that make the biggest difference. And I tell people this all the time. Now, I want you to think about this. If you had the privilege as an angler to stand up on the boat dock while they went through final inspection for the Forest Wood Cup or for the Bassmaster Classic. If you could look in those boats, they all got the same lures. Everybody's got the same lure. And it might be a few rare, rare exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, they all got the same lures. And one guy's gonna catch a boatload and one guy's gonna zero. It's not the lure, it's what you do with that lure. It's where you fish it, it's how you fish it. Little subtle things make the okay, difference in catching right. them and not catching them. Now we're going to explain how we did this. We caught him on a bonus rod. You take this thing and all these floating pellets, these fish come up and get them. You just take a hook with no weight, put you a little floater out there, and wait on him to take the bobber under. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Franco Hill said it better than anybody. He said, there are no strangers in the world. They're just friends who we've never met. 
Now, how cool, you think about that a minute, and I get to meet new friends, and these guys are truly, absolutely my hero, old friends, and gosh, how I miss Mark McCowan. Uh, man, I miss him. He was just one of those special op guys that was special, special, so we've had a lot of great memories there, and that is all fishing is about, is about fellowship. Fishing Fellowship for Freedom. Kingfisher Society, great guys, a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being with me. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker. And don't forget to visit us at hankparker.com, the place for tips, giveaways, and more. The house needs painting, the grass needs mowing. Where's he at? Gone fishing.